All right, so doing a different camera angle today. It might be a little weird, but I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna run with it today. But for this video, I have no idea what it's gonna be called, to be honest. <laughs> so I'll figure that out after. But anyways, um, I want to talk kind of about let's see, kind of the different spiritual systems a little bit, like Luna and Solar and stuff like that a little bit, but. Um, in the last video, I was, I was talking about, okay, well, once you kind of get this understanding of, you know, like the Trinity aspect and all these different levels, you have, you could say like a higher self, middle, like the middle self, if you want to call it that, lower self, combining all of these, right? Now, I also said I would kind of give some tools and things like that on um, actually doing this now. Uh, this isn't the only you know thing I'm gonna give on that. I'm just kind of getting started with it, but so when it comes down to it, it's hard. See, I think a lot of people on one level are kind of struggling with um, understanding like themselves as an individual within the reality that we're in, and then also the reality that. They want to go into kind of what the future of the world is the future of well this like you know this type of world right and um yeah kind of just integrating like what they're gonna do towards what we're trying to get to which i don't know i don't think there's really much of a consensus on a consensus on that you know so we can look at this from our subjective viewpoints we can look at this from uh like a biblical aspect of um the book enoch and revelations and things like that right uh we can look at this from different group standpoints so there's all these you know there's a bunch of different groups out here um and they have kind of their own perspective of what the future is going to be like uh we can look at this mythologically um yeah so there's a, there's a few different ways to look at it. Now, on a mythological level, let's just, I guess we'll start it backwards. On a mythological level, right, you have things like Ragnarok. Um, Ragnarok is like in the Viking, Celtic, you know, like that type of, um, that type of spiritual system. Then you have things like, um, even, this is, kind of not mythology it's more modern but hp lovecraft and um, a lot of sci-fi because a lot of people don't realize that uh things like hp lovecraft right and like um uh with an um with his stories and with um different sci-fi and stuff like that sorry got a little distracted uh with some of the sci-fi and stuff like that they talk about the past but they they heavily focus on the future as well right so there's different groups again it's not just sci-fi so there could be things like cyberpunk steampunk um yeah you know things like that afrofuturism like there's all these different kind of um perspectives i guess about the future right then you have um let's see what other aspects are there mythologically so i don't think the greeks really had an end of i don't think they really had a end of the world or uh, like that kind of scenario i think they there is with more about the whole father and son thing about the continuation of that i'm pretty sure like i don't think they really had an ending to their mythology um egyptian mythology if you want to call it mythology they kind of just a lot of people will say they vanished as a people same with the mayans and stuff like that a lot of people will say they vanished in a sense um yeah there's um there's like things about the nile river and like the flooding of the nile river and the whole thing about a dam being built and the dam being destroyed so there's some there's some stuff about that as well and then so they have prophecies about the future in a sense the um let's see what else is there i think there's stories of like in asia about dragons and stuff like that kind of 
kind of like a dragon war happening in a sense another one like already one already happened so it's kind of like a like a, another one happening then you got things like uh the make because you kind of got to include this things like the matrix of terminator um about this whole time traveling shit so an interesting thing about it too is a lot of that gets into like different dark uh dark terrestrial groups um i don't really like getting too much into the et shit but like it it that is part of it as well so now the reason i mentioned that is because there's one group that deals with um time and like kind of how the terminator came back from the future and all that type of stuff so there's like this time stuff right um you call them like time cops in a sense where um kind of like the movie looper uh blade runner what else is there there's a show called the continuum i didn't watch it but there's a show called continuum or something like that they they talk about this uh thing and i think a show just came out on netflix called adam project or something like that where they time travel i didn't watch it either but they i think something just came out about that um so yeah there's a lot of different there's a lot of different perspectives on it and then biblically you have the rapture so the rapture obviously deals with um supposedly like i feel like i should bring up the verses but i don't know i don't, I don't really care too much to bring it up but a lot of people with the rapture they kind of just imagine it as like being like people being taken and like turn into light and they kind of just almost vanish in a sense and then there's the whole light body thing and you know what i mean like all that type of stuff then there's the whole war again kind of like the finishing of the war in heaven the angel demon war type of thing and yeah there, there, there's a lot of different stories even in marvel you got spawn that's another one because it goes into this whole story it's or, sorry not marvel and dc spawn it, there's a lot of different stories that go into this so what's gonna what's gonna happen in the future is kind of you can't really no one can really say they're gonna they know what's gonna happen but right now i think a lot of people are um because of how what's happening in society because being focused on the individual self is definitely very important right but that will only take you so far so if you have people who are like prepping and things like that right and they're thinking like okay we're gonna prepare and then society shuts down for however long then i'll have this amount of food or may, maybe have like a cabin somewhere and or maybe I got like a trailer. I don't know. People got like different. Maybe I got like underground. Like Alex Jones, I remember was promoting this out underground um, storage unit that type of situations they he had going on and stuff. But um, and actually, yeah, that's also in the movie. That's also in the movie Cloverfield. I think the second Cloverfield movie. But um, Cloverfield talks about this type of shit too. So there's um there's that. But like at the end of the day, if if you be realistic about it, how you're not really gonna go you're not really gonna go into nature and just survive in nature and then be out there hunting with your bow or hunting with your gun until you're out of bullets and then using your bow and arrow and protecting your most likely unhealthy family because the majority of your family is probably pretty unhealthy um and then at the same time be slightly dependent on things like cars and electronics but then like are you just gonna be using horses you know what i'm saying like i don't for the most part and then what is it just gonna be you and your family and then you're gonna restart civilization or like you know what i'm saying like this just kind of if you kind of just think about those things it's like it's only gonna be like that can only be a thing where the only real way that type of thing will even matter is if it's like let's say you know society is going the way it's going and then something happens and then during that time while something's happening you guys like people are out there like doing their thing i'm not saying to not be prepared and stuff like that you should be but uh people are out there you know doing their thing and then once kind of society maybe stabilizes or something then people come back and like it's not really a thing where like if you're someone who's like maybe like we're gonna get a private area a private village uh an island like different things like that then i mean that's another situation itself so that's that's only if things end with just society as we know it crumbling and there isn't natural disasters and things like that because 
Yeah. Because that's another thing. And then are you just going to live on an island for the rest of, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, for the rest of your life? So then there's the whole thing about, um, then you got places like South America and Africa, which even if Western society fell, it wouldn't really affect them that much because they'd honestly probably start thriving even better. Um, so that's kind of, this is also just based off of economics and class levels. So there's a lot of people on higher class levels where even if society and these type of things were to fail, like they're not really worried because they got their own setups already. Like they already got like their own like secret cities, underground cities, bunkers, space programs. Um, yeah. Like basically they're underwater shit, like things underwater, like they got their own, like they got their own thing going on basically already. So even if things were to go down, like they're already ready for that type of thing. But at the end of the day, that, like that's again, only going to get you so far. So the way I kind of think is about some people will think about it on like a more earthly level where it's like, okay, well, once society starts falling, then I got to do this and I got to do that and I'll be set for yeah, and, but then there's the, also the idea of okay well that's maybe as an individual and stuff but then there's the idea of as a whole like where is um if you want to look at this like evolution i don't really want to word it like that but is it going to be a thing where people just kind of regress and then after they regress we're going to go back to where we are and then have the same problems we have right now and then just the same shit go like Basically, I don't think a lot of people are thinking about solving the problems we have and then the future as well. So I talked about this in my um, this in my vampire, my monsters video, because I think I called the monsters, the future and reality or something like that. Um, so I did talk about this a little bit in there, but um, let me make sure it's recording too. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was going to say, if I just talked to, for the last... 10, 12 minutes or whatever, and it wasn't recording, it would have been kind of annoying, but anyways, so, yeah, those are all things to kind of think about, I think a lot of people are, um, see, I, I kind of take the emotion out of it, I just think about it just to think about it, because, yeah, that, that's just the situation we're in, and then, then there's the whole thing about, like, being chosen, and then there's all, a lot of different groups who feel entitled that they're chosen based off of um, whatever criteria that they fulfill that makes them feel chill. Basically, I, a lot of people think that. So, pretty much, it's like there's so many illusions. It's kind of a lot of people also don't even really understand what the real world is, right? Because there's so many illusions. And so many people in the Western world are so into cities, right? That they are disconnected from nature and things like that as well so and it's not just nature but nature connects you to the real world as well because even in nature and shit like that like a lot of like the uh, mesoamerican societies right they'll when they talk about maya and stuff like that they'll talk about really this reality itself being an illusion too including the nature and everything as well so it goes it goes kind of deep so now i said i talk about luna solar and like the different spiritual systems to an extent but the way I'm going to break it down, because a lot of people don't really know what those are, so I'm not going to really break it down like that. I'll pretty much break it down like this. You have understanding kind of like your, your if you want to call it your animal nature or your um, more shamanistic tribal nature, then understanding, um, you could say like human nature, and then understanding how to become more than human in a sense, right? So it's like this kind of this combination of all of it. So first, before people want to understand how they can become the more aspect, they should probably, like the more of what they are aspect, they should probably figure out the lower aspects first and build their way up. Like that's kind of, you got to kind of work your way up the totem pole, not really, um, not really like start at the top of the mountain and then go down. <laughs> You probably want to work your way up it. So when it comes to the more animalistic side of things, 
when you see in Egypt how they have like the heads of these different animals, right? If you see in indigenous cultures around the whole world how um, they all have a they all have within their own tribes and their own groups and stuff they all have their own understanding of how the environment works and how they integrate with the environment right that's pretty much the first and foremost part that's probably the most important so modern day people integrate with cities and i keep saying this all the time but they just become obese and all this different shit but that's understandable because they're just like kind of like a integrated into that environment and like the food and just everything that is happening in society makes them um basically how do i word it like um It makes the average person pretty, uh, kind of like a cow in a farm. Like how they kind of are fed up with hormones and steroids and stuff like that. And they're definitely like not, they don't look like a normal cow anymore. And things like, uh, certain chickens or certain, I don't know, certain animals, like they never even see light. You have like fish that are grown in these messed up like waters and stuff. They... It's almost like you have the average person is like almost like a different type of human now, which is not really even it's not more than human or any of that other stuff I'm talking about. It's almost just like a um, it's like their higher faculties have been removed. A lot of them, even if they are more intelligent, like there are maybe in higher classes in society, um, just because of how like the structures that they're within, whether they're a boss or like the different things that they're the different structures they're within, they're still kind of like in an altered state but they're still using like the natural faculties that they've come with but in like an altered state so that's a whole nother level to it but so for that's kind of like the average person who's integrated into society and um they kind of keep the beast going that's causing a lot of the problems that we're having around the world because People can talk about climate change and all this stuff and we can say that climate change is bullshit and like we want the planet to heat up and like understand that um it's not really that simple like like people will talk about climate change actually because i don't think people realize how subtle the balance of things on the planet is but i understand that about the level of we want it to be hotter and stuff like that obviously i'm in canada but um <laughs> beyond that you have Basically, society has caused so many problems beyond that. Like, as you can see with how everybody's kind of warring with each other and different things that are happening. And war is, like, not even really that big of a deal. To, like, it is not It is a huge problem. But, I mean, especially in, like, in Ethiopia right now. But, I mean, that for the totality of the world, there's way more problems than that, too. And it's not just... Um, differing ideologies and things like that it's um it goes a little bit beyond that so anyways that's a lot of the problems that's happening in the city right so i think the more things that happen in the, the when, when i say the city or the western world i'm kind of using all that interchangeable um interchangeably so a lot of these things that are happening and i don't want to make it sound like i got all the answers or anything like that i'm just kind of able to see and think through a lot of shit to a point where um a lot of this stuff doesn't surprise me and i can kind of have a lot of foresight so it's not really it doesn't mean i know what's going to happen or I have, like have all the answers it's just i'm not really i don't know I, i'm not the type of person to to wait for uh like if i know someone's about to try to shoot me i'm not going to wait for them to pull out the gun and shoot me i'm the type to to kind of like see it before it's coming so if someone's trying to set you up for a failure i can kind of see that you know what i'm saying for the most part so that's kind of where i'm going with all this so when i'm talking about the western world and the societies and all that type of stuff like including the secret societies and stuff a lot of them are setting up the world for a lot of failure and shit like and for people to basically take on the bad karma that was created by other groups but for the most part everyone within this pyramid scheme that I 
described in the monster in, in the monsters video right um they're basically taking out the karma for all of that type of stuff so even like in rap right like your average rapper is probably not really doing a lot of the shit that they're talking about but you have other people doing that right who listens to it because <laughs> there's a lot of predictive programming and stuff like that so because there's a lot of people who do that kind of shit just off of listening to it not because of the circumstances and situation there and there's a lot of people who just do it from hearing it and stuff like that so there's um but then at the end of the day that that same rapper that person is listening to like they'll it's like the energy gets fed to them it's kind of this and but they don't get the karma of doing the negative shit that they're talking about like it's kind of it'd be you can call it the, sh the black brotherhood uh like they're called the shadow brotherhood or whatever they basically know how to pawn off people call it the, even the shadow government shit like that too but they know how to like pawn off their karma onto other people and stuff like that so that's um and it's not as easy as it sounds it's not like you could just like give your karma to another person but it's like a way to um get something done this is kind of the whole satanism type of shit too it's like they know how to get things done without them doing it but then get the rewards like the positive stuff of what would happen from that but not get the negative parts of it so it's just this is kind of why people do all this deceptive stuff that they do like it's really so they can try to extract all the positive and leave all the negative um in this crazy way it's kind of why like a lot of the rich people and stuff like that they pawn they give all the ta like they don't really pay taxes it's all the working people who pay the taxes but then the rich people like they they it's like th this way that they have um things set up but anyways um now if you think about I, i'm not trying to make anything sound hopeless or anything like that either i'm just kind of trying to get people to see that if you're doing things on a singular level it's not really going to work there's not going to really be a um you even if you're someone who is immortal right and you're just by yourself in nature while the rest of the world crumbles it's like you're just gonna walk around until you find someone you know what i'm saying like you, there, these singular levels you can't it gets to a point where um being being a like an individual like you got to be the right type of individual but at the same time you got to be able to kind of collectively come together as a group and i i would still say right now isn't a hundred percent the time people want to come together come together like maybe like start attracting to the right people and stuff like that but i wouldn't say right now is the time to make moves as a group yet it's more of the time to still um, get yourself right because even if you had a group of people together on like an island or together on like a piece of land right chances are none of those people actually want to do farming for example to get food you know really none of them and none of them really want to figure out ways to set up irrigation and things like that so that most of the work is already done for them they don't got to do the like a lot of people just want to like it's it's not really um a lot of people want to just kind of enjoy the uh what the matrix has to offer still but at the same time neglect the seriousness of the, what's happening in the world but then at the same time be not a part of it you, you know what i'm saying so it's kind of like you're it's a, like, kind of walking like a fine line like you gotta enjoy life but at the same time um i'd rather enjoy things like you gotta go to like sometimes you gotta sometimes before you have peace you gotta have war like and i'm not saying like actually war with another person but sometimes like before you have like it's good to have peace at all times but you sometimes you gotta be able to know how to um fight through whatever you're dealing with and whatever maybe not the other people too but i'm just saying like as a group fight through what you're ever whatever we're dealing with and then have peace out like after we get to the point where we're supposed to be at you know like there's a lot of things that kind of have to be worked on um so and a lot of people just kind of want to resort to they like finding solutions is not really a lot of people's um mindset you know what i'm saying like 
a lot of people want to find ways to argue. For example, with the whole African, African American thing, right? That doesn't even really need to be an argument. Like, even regardless if a person believes they're from Africa or not from Africa, it really doesn't matter, to be honest. Like, for the individual person, it might matter. But I'm saying, into finding solutions about what the plan is. Like, a lot of people just want to stay in the same position. Like, what if you have to leave your neighborhood? You know what I'm saying? Oh, is that even something people are willing to do? Or do they just want to... Like, that, that, that's what I'm kind of saying. Like, you can... People, people think when people say, go to South America, go to Africa, go to whatever, it's not because, like, you can always go back to places and things like that. It's not really that deep. But if, for example, the United States is kind of um, going through all this crazy shit with pretty much every country right now, um, it doesn't seem too wise to stay at that exact location. Like, I mean... I'm trying to see the benefits of it other than just having the amenities of being in a first world country. You know what I'm saying? Like that's really, and you can pretty much get that in other places too. So I, I don't really see the benefits other than pride, you know? So that's just kind of being realistic, but If people have in their own communities a self-sustaining way for the community to live, then, I mean, I understand why people would want to say, but I don't think people have that at all in any kind of way. I think there's just a lot of problems. But so anyways, that's a whole nother conversation. But that that's kind of what I'm saying. Like people will would rather just have these arguments and stuff rather than figuring out solutions to the to the to the situation at hand, because regardless this is not a fight that has anything to do with us really all this other shit that's happening in the world but but people don't want to get out of the way they want to stay in the middle of it for whatever reason i don't know if they just want to be entertained or i don't know they, like <laughs> it, maybe it's narcissism who, who knows really what it's about but it, it it could be a lot of things so i don't know that's neither here or there that's a whole nother that's a whole nother thing so now one so that's actually a decent segue though so regardless of where you are indigenous to in the world when it comes to shamanism which i'm just kind of using that as a term but understanding nature and all that type of stuff it, for example me being born here in canada in the spot that i am right now me being born here i'm gonna have to connect like and i always have but i'm gonna have to connect to the animals and then the actual nature that i'm in right here you know what i'm saying so regardless of i'm not blackfoot you know what i'm saying but like the blackfoot tribe themselves already have this established system with nature here i'm not saying i'm gonna, I'm gonna follow what they do 100 percent or even to an extent but like what i'm getting at is regardless of where you are ethnically ethnically from we should still be connecting with the indigenous area that we're in like point blank period even if we use spiritual, even if you use a spiritual system from, let's say like Ifa or like like from Nigeria and stuff like, if you're using like Ifa or like, I don't know, different spiritual systems from like you can you can integrate those into the place that you're at as well. But it still should be um, synchronistic with uh, the land that you're on. So, to so there's two levels to it, right? So you have you as an individual. So how do you connect to nature as an individual? But then there is how you you and the group you're with connect as well to nature as like a collective, right? As a tribe or whatever you want to call it. So individually, one of the first things you want to learn with this whole animal thing I'm talking about is kind of the animal spirits that you work with. So um, it's pretty easy a lot of times to figure it out. Usually these are probably like their favorite animals and Things like that, you know, I don't, I don't mean like a chihuahua or some shit like that. I mean, like, if you're growing up and you're like, I don't know, I like giraffes or I like, I don't know, like eagles or some shit, right? Whatever animal that you, so you have like animal steer, you, there, there's different places you can look at this information. So I probably have it in some playlists. You're going to have to surf through. I don't know the name of it off the top of my head. Probably like um, non-traditional 
non non religious spiritual systems in brackets ATRs um, probably in that playlist um, there's probably some other playlists that talk about this info but or I have videos of people talking about this info so uh, new likes tools he so new and you life l y f e tools or he talks about he has videos kind of breaking each each part of a lot of this stuff down pretty well uh, serious king he talks about i don't even know if it's on the serious king page or if it's on his i think it's on a serious king page but anyways there's a lot of people who talk about this type of information so um universal frequencies he talks about this um on a different level but the fundamental breakdowns you can check on those like the people i mentioned right so you have things like uh your totem you have things like your animal spirit that you might work with you might have more than one for each of these right you have um not even just animal spirits you could be working with plant spirits and you have things like understanding the elements which i talk about all the time um and i have a playlist about elements i also have a playlist about um so yeah, there's a lot of them, right? But anyways, the elements, and then you have things like understanding the different kingdoms, right? So this is understanding on the tree of life when I show you that bottom of the sephira, the bottom sephira earth or Malkuth, right? You have different kingdoms, right? So you have like mineral kingdom, plant kingdom, animal kingdom. Um, and then in the animal kingdom, like all of these can be different elements as well, right? So it breaks down in a bunch of levels. Then you have like planets, things like that, right? So these... Um, before you, sorry, before you get the planets, but you have all these different kingdoms, right? So, um, on top of that, these are basically when you know how to integrate all these type of, all these things together, this is kind of how you get a pretty good connection with nature as a, as a whole, right? Um, it also ties into like spirits and different entities and all the different type of stuff, right? So... This is the type of stuff that gets you grounded, right? Because then there's a lot of people who are into like aliens and a lot of like higher stuff, but they have no real connection with nature. You know what I'm saying? This is kind of why they a lot of the people who get into like the alien and like science, like high science, science, science fiction type of shit. A lot of them, uh, you, they're pretty reliant on society to a huge extent. Like, it, and that's not really a bad thing, but it's just the fact that they don't have any like grounding in any kind of sense. So, um, connecting to ancestors is another big one. Um, so there's levels to it about how you kind of go into it. And I'm not really going to break down exactly how you do it, but just kind of understanding how to do that is important and kind of getting into that. Because I can't really just, that's some, I can't just break down all of that in one quick video and, you know what I'm saying? It's not really that simple. You kind of have to take your time with it, but. Uh, things like animal spirits. I'll talk about some of that stuff for a bit, but if you look at, so if you have like a little totem, like a statue of an animal, or even, you can say even this could be a totem in a sense, uh, depending on how you infuse energy with it too. Uh, you even have things like in uh, Doctor Strange, you remember how, if you've seen the movie, how Basically, there was all these different artifacts, and the artifacts would choose a person. It, even things like that is totemic. Um, and then, obviously, you have things like totem poles. And, you know, now when you have a totem, right? So let's say you have. Let's. I'll give two examples. Let's say you have a bull as a totem, and like let's say another person has an eagle as a totem, right? So one thing you're never going to do is eat your totem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if you have a bull as a totem, you know, you're not going to be eating bulls for the most part. Like you might drink milk and dairy, like you might deal with dairy and all that type of stuff. So by the way, this goes beyond plant-based and all this type of shit. Like this is understanding plant-based a lot of times, like, um, like where things like this even come from. Um, and it's not just, this is the only place it comes from, but this is one of the huge areas. So it's, it'd be ridiculous, for example, to think like a place like Egypt or Kemet, right? A whole, a place that was a nation and an empire. The empire has many nations within it. And then on top of that, 
a nation has many different groups within that nation, right? It'd be kind of ridiculous to think that everybody ate and lived the same way. And Kemi was very, every group was very different. So this is kind of like, well, understanding things like shamanism, and I'm using that term loosely, um, would help you, help you even understand these different cultures and different groups a lot better. So you have, for example, a bull and an eagle, right? So if you think about like a bull, a bull eats grass, it eats wheat, right? Um, vegan, pretty much. It produces milk and like, you know, it does, like it, it, it works the field in a sense, like an agricultural level. So it's kind of an agriculturalist. It does a bunch of different things. So if that was your totem, this is kind of a representation of you. I don't really want to make it sound like, a, you can kind of say it's like a past life version of you in a sense, but it's more like, this is like a animalistic sense of you. So even if you're a Taurus, like you might have this energy yourself. Like it, there's different ways of looking how you have this energy. Now, when you have that understanding then you'll kind of start seeing things differently so let's say you have an eagle as a totem now eagles they might deal heavily with the air element bulls with the earth element right and the sun to an extent as well but um eagles right they deal heavily with the sun and the air right so if you have an eagle as a totem for an example you might what do they do they eat fish they eat mice they eat snakes and they they eat a bunch of different stuff, right? They eat, um, they eat grains as well. A bunch of different stuff. So, and then they do different things. They like they be they be observing things from a high altitude, and they can they have an oversight of a lot of different things at once. And then they have the ability to like this is eagle specifically, not just birds, like because different different birds are different di different, right? Like vultures are completely different than like ravens and crows and stuff. Be real different than like a like an eagle right but eagles will have that ability to dive really fast right so if you played games like assassin's creed the eagle was one of their totems you know what i'm saying like zeus his totem one of his totems would be the eagle for example like so these would be the type that would be like maybe a fisherman you know what i'm saying because they would deal heavily with fish um they might heavily deal with things like cardio because it has to do with the air element um this is starting to infuse that totemic animal like starting to know what's well, already infused with you because it is um so again there's a difference between your animal spirits and your totems so like totems would be more things that work that you work with so they kind of be more like familiars and shit like that too but like not exactly familiars are slightly different too but like these are energies that you work with that's more like that you add to yourself that's not really part of you in a sense but um you can have animal spirits that you infuse with totems too so it kind of becomes kind of becomes iffy here but but if it's your animal spirit this is already part of you so these are already things you do but once you understand it you can enhance it a lot more so if you're a cheetah type if you're a cheetah type you might be able to run fast you might have like really good agility but at the same time you might have uh, bad stamina it's like like you have pretty good stamina but not like wants to run out of stamina, like the things that you hunt have good stamina, <laughs> like things like gazelles and shit like that, they have good stamina, but, but a cheetah, once they run out of energy, they're just like panting, like they're breathing hard. So these are maybe like Usain Bolt type of people, people who can run fast for short distances. So when you understand these different things, you're going to understand more about your nature. You're going to understand maybe more things about, um, so if you're more eagle, like the people who are more fish, like, maybe like Pisces, I don't know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like these different types of energies, they're more um, the things you kind of hunt in a sense, if that makes sense. Like these are the more things that you, like you understand the things that are kind of, um, you, you kind of understand your psych, your, yourself in the, in the cycle of life, if that makes sense, in the cycle of nature and everything like that. So if you have lion energy, right? You might, this is kind of why in the Lion King, right? You saw him go vegan for a while and then he went back to his normal, and I'm staying plant-based, so don't even connect this to me. So don't relate this to some other shit, but uh, <laughs> this is more like, if you see how like the Lion King, like he was eating meat 
and then he started being like a vegan he went out and did some other shit and then he came back and he started eating meat again right like it was it was him kind of like even though he's a lion <laughs> it was like this lion understanding that he's a lion you know what i'm saying so you can say maybe in ancient ancient times these animals didn't actually eat these things and they were plant-based and all this different like maybe so um that's currently not the world we're in right now but i mean maybe so actually most likely so like i do agree with that for the most part but like that's that's another conversation so and i'm not so what i'm trying to get at is now in like jainism and things like that and buddhism and stuff right every buddha and every jain like every tert and car like all these they weren't all just plant-based you know what i'm saying like there was aesthetics there was like there was different types of these um there's different types you know so the aesthetics were more of the like in a pure form and they yeah they they didn't even mess with like any kind of stuff like not even honey none of that type of stuff like they didn't mess with literally any so they they dealt they were more in like the nature they were like actually out in nature climbing mountain like they were doing shit right? you know what i'm saying like now there was other ones that maybe were like teachers and they provided information and then they might have ate different so there's different types of these buddhas and jains and stuff like that so it's kind of the same thing as you see in the shamanistic expression in and i'm using shaman again loosely but in the shamanistic expression in like egypt and things like that or in kemet where you see all the different heads right of different deities and stuff like that there's no way that the lion like a lion-headed deity and the bird had to dd ate the same thing you know what i'm saying so this goes into a lot of things so like even um with islam and um the judaism like the actual judeo-christianity like the actual orthodox and tawahedo all that type of stuff but and islam right with not eating pork and there's a bloodline of seth And then Set in Kemet was a boar on one level. You see what I'm getting at? So it's like, that's kind of like a, either a totem or an animal spirit. It's one of the two, but either way, they didn't eat that on one level because they are that on a level. Now, that's not a bad thing so people don't need to take that as a bad thing like it's just but that's just what it is you know what i'm saying so when you see the whole thing about like when i say like king kong and godzilla and then some people will say if a bear were to fight um a gorilla right and then the bear kind of represents the boar or set in a sense and the gorilla kind of represents osiris or sar in that sense so when you see biblically like they'll eat uh they'll, they'll be heavily influenced with uh cattle right and they'll raise cattle and all this type of stuff but they'll also eat cattle right kind of shows you about the whole relationship with seth and osar you see what i'm saying so it goes into a lot of things so some people might have more crocodile vulture natures you know there might be men or women who have that kind of nature and they might eat um if they got that like raven crow nature they might be on some scavenger type of shit where they just kind of want to they can kind of eat everything there is and then people with that more boar type of spirit they might be able to also pretty much eat anything you know what i'm saying so that is kind of it's more about when you kind of understand these things on an astrological level on a genetic level and on a spiritual level right then you'll kind of start understanding that it's not really like a like a one size fits all approach type of thing you know what i mean unless like a group is part of a certain tribe then for the most part they might they might eat very similar things you know what i'm saying but then you'll see like in a lot of tri well you might not see this but a lot of people who are from tribes and stuff know what i'm talking about they usually when they're born they might be given a little figurine or something that represents a animal spirit that they're or like something that they're born with you know what i'm saying a totem or an animal spirit that they're necessarily born with even in like native cultures when you see people named like 
I don't know, like Eagle Tail and stuff like that. Like this is this is representing things like that. You you see what I'm saying? So that's kind of that's that's a big part in understanding because a lot of people when we talk about when people talk about ancestors, they think it doesn't. First of all, all your ancestors that might not be even positive for you. Some might be negative. Some might be positive, right? Um, and on top, like you might have a pretty, you might have an ancestor that was sh pretty shitty, you know what I'm saying? But you might have some good ones too. So it's not just the people that were ancestors too. It's also like the animal spirits of your ancestors on an extent, plant spirits on or ancestors to an extent. You see what I'm saying? And this is kind of how you understand, um, patterns from those time periods and the patterns that you're playing out now. And then when you understand that, you're able to kind of enhance that. It was kind of, again, like the Lion King thing. He didn't know he was, it was almost like he didn't know he was a lion. <laughs> and then when he figured out he was a lion and he was like, okay, maybe I got to have courage and eat meat and shit like that. <laughs> then he went back and took took over from Scar. You, you see what I'm saying? So I'm not saying to eat, go eat meat if you don't eat meat. Like I'm, I'm plant-based. I know what I'm doing though with, with what I'm doing. But that, that is... Um, that's kind of the same concept though like he didn't know what he was he didn't really know what he was doing and once he knew what he was doing he knew what he was or once he knew what he was he knew what he was supposed to be doing you see what i'm saying so um that was kind of like uh, an analogy of showing a basically like a person because everything in the lion kingdom lion king was kind of representing people and tribes and stuff like that too right it was kind of representing a person coming in t like becoming in tune with themselves and then knowing what they should be doing, even though in the past they were already doing that, but now it's like they know what they should be doing and why, but it's more about also understanding why they're doing it too, right? Uh, and then that gives you more power as well. So that's kind of, and I'm not gonna go too deep into the totem animals, like I'm already going pretty deep. I'm not gonna go too much deeper about like the totem and animal spirit stuff. Like another totem that could be is like, if you have like a feather or something like that, right? You have um, even a wooden staff, right? I have one right here. That's from a certain tree. That tree is a plant spirit. You see, you see what I'm saying? Um, Buddha, when he really reached enlightenment, he was meditating under a Bodhi tree, right? A Bodhi tree is a type of, it's a tree, it's an ancestor. That's why he was gaining memories, <clears throat> gaining memories being under this tree. Like a lot of, um, like even how people use chopsticks and like, you know, those wooden sandals they have in Asia and stuff like that. Like these are, there's deeper reasons behind all this type of stuff. Even um, certain metals and stuff like that, like silver and like different metals and stuff like that. Um, jade, like jade might've been more useful to like, like jade, for example, might've been more uh, useful to like Chinese and um, certain groups around there, right? Then, in North America, in the Mayans and you know different groups, obsidian and obsidian is pretty important pretty much everywhere. But obsidian might have been heavily important there, and they might have used obsidian mirrors and stuff like that for scrying. So even different um, crystals and different things like that are native to certain areas more so than other places, and they are almost ancestral as well. You know, so. A tree of one place might be ancestral to one person, then a tree of another place might be ancestral to another person. So the food that you're eating also goes into all of that. It's a deeper, it's a high level form of, like, a lot of people don't understand how to infuse healing, alchemy, and food. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people will do healing with food, but they don't really understand alchemy and, like, the ancestral stuff and things like that that go into it as well. So it gets, it gets, it gets a lot deeper once you understand a lot of these things, you know what I'm saying? So this is kind of why even biblically when it, the Hebrews, right, when they were like wandering and everything and the whole, like, they're pretty much wandering the whole book, but I'm saying the whole thing about them wandering and then not knowing kind of, um, basically taking on the spirits of every single nature nation they kind of wandered through. The thing was, is like, they also need to throw out each of these nations, spiritual systems as they went through it on a level. You see what I'm saying? Because it wasn't, uh, it was causing more, see, like, look at it like this, right? 
when in the Lion King when he was um, vegan in a sense, <laughs> um, and no, no one should think I'm harping at plant-based people because I literally am myself and I'm not like that. That is that is what it is. So when he was vegan though, like for that lion specifically, it was causing chaos in him and like he might have seemed like he was having fun with all these different, you know, like beings and stuff like the boar and like i don't know all these beings when he was outside of the kingdom but when he went back to the kingdom his kingdom was all messed up right because um that kingdom itself is a reflection of what's inside of you but he wasn't in his kingdom he was out in the land of non out in nature out in like the nature outside of his kingdom like out in like the chaos kind of world so when he went back into the place of order of his kingdom right he saw how his kingdom was out of whack because he was out of whack you know what i'm saying so if you look at like the place that you're from the neighborhood that you're in the people that you're a part of if they're out of whack and you're out of whack it also has to do with the things that you're putting into you not just food but like the the information the spirits all this type of stuff right um and cause a person to be out of sync with nature you see what i'm saying and when they're out of sync with nature that also means like their tribe or their group of people their community whatever all of that is going to be out of sync as well and there's going to be no harmony but then you see in like the lion king once he got everything in harmony they all started singing together and it was, <laughs> everything was like everything was literally in harmony you see what i'm saying so that that's the first level and then after that he was able to become the king you know like I, I, so i don't even really like the lion king like i'm not gonna lie I, I watched the new one a while back when it came out but i don't even i don't really uh, and that's whatever but anyways that's that's more of like the um that's more of understanding like the um the nature of things and things like that right now in Kemet for example if you had all these different places so you might have like crocodile crocodile polis or whatever the hell that place is called right where it was a it was for Sobek right they had like crocodiles everywhere in the city all that type of stuff the environment there is going to be very different than if you're in maybe like heliopolis or if you're in like thebes or if you're in memphis or you know well actually i think the crocodile places in memphis. but anyways if you're these different polises are centers for these different nature spirit like these different like kemet was heavily shamanist shamanistic a lot of people don't really know this still recording I gotta make sure. Okay, I've been going on for like an hour. This is already hella long. So that's the that's the first level, right? Now once that level is in play, then everyone can kinda do their job. So um other example is uh in a Avengers I don't remember which one it was. It was after the Thanos snap, when ev that movie where everybody was like, when Thor was fat and everybody was just like out of whack. That's kind of like explaining how everyone was out of whack in a sense, you know what I'm saying? But then you have next, you have the pretty much the level of, you could say, being human in a sense, if we want to word it like that. So basically the level of you being integrated now in your society. You see what I'm saying? So once kind of people understand these lower natures of themselves, then they can kind of understand their place within the environment that they're in right so you have a lot of people who are spiritual that's kind of well everybody is but they're in some kind of matrix setting and they feel uncomfortable in it because like they don't really know how to like figure out this balance between isolation and integration then you have um yeah you have kind of just be people feeling out of place on so many different levels now the average person probably feels out of place in society right now too because of all the shit that's going down they probably just feel like maybe something's going on <laughs> but no like they're uncomfortable you know um then beyond that so i should also say a lot of people with help and a lot of the stuff that i was talking about um it's not really about following what's a trend it's more about following what's actually right for you you see what i'm saying so that's that's important now it doesn't mean you shouldn't try being plant-based and try these things regardless of what you're doing because at the end of the day you regardless of all that you're still a human you're clearly not a damn crocodile or some shit but like at the end of the day like 
you should still try all these like things to it's a, it, it gets to another level so then you get to a level where like um once you are cleaned out and all this type of stuff if you go to different land masters and stuff like that if you're eating the meats of those different areas you're kind of connecting with that area but there's levels that you can connect with that area on a ground a lot of people won't tell you this there you can ground yourself with an area without eating the meat of that area there's another way to do that um which i will not go into here <laughs> now there's again the more human level which is kind of integrating with it's more like a family setting kind of integrating with like um having because society is about relationships you, you know what i'm saying so um that's like more venus energy so it's like more like um it's kind of like having a kingdom or like a tribe in a sense like that's kind of from aries to individual to libra like more of like the um re relationships but more like a society level it's kind of um, the human level is kind of about understanding that so if you kind of understand yourself on these elemental level so uh, there's also the elemental level as well but if you understand how all like how you're how you're connected with all these different things then regardless of the situation you're in you'll be able to synchronize kind of with with the with the environment you're in if if that makes sense like if you understand yourself on an elemental level and on this um and all and all this other these other levels as well right you'll be able to understand how you can kind of integrate into that society in whatever type of level so like a bird might be a track star now you know what i'm saying like a, a gazelle might be a track star also like a, a chances are you have more than one animal spirit but still anyways um you might just have one who knows but you i don't know a lion might be an actor now like you know this is kind of how like the astrology kind of because a lot of people don't understand that astrology goes beyond just like a leo can be an actor like it's more like you understand the elemental nature of it and then you understand how to integrate that into the environment that you're in so Back however long ago there might have not been actors so what would have been what would a leo have been in that situation you see what i'm saying it's kind of like when you understand these natures and stuff it's like when you're in that setting you can you can you can uh you can be different like a fish is still going to be a fish rather ra rather than whether if it's in an aquarium or if it's in the ocean you know what i'm saying if a lion or these animals were plant-based if you want to say that way back and back 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 in time that was in that environment so if they were in that environment again then they can do that in this environment they might act a little bit you know however but so sometimes you got to use your willpower to override the environment you're in and that's kind of more what i do because um i rather just go for my, my highest my highest default settings you know what i'm saying rather than maybe like the average person who's kind of just a product of their environment but um because that's kind of a choice you have as a human and stuff like that but then this is kind of where it gets you into the higher natures and kind of becoming more than what you are so when you understand those other two levels right which i don't really get into the human aspect too much but i feel like that's pretty self-explanatory it's kind of just um it's kind of like the when people talk about social constructs and all this type of shit it's kind of like social constructs that we create so it's like the cultures and the groups and you know it's kind of like that now uh and it's not really like created like man-made created it's not like that it's it's real but it's based off of the it's based off of the patterns that already exist you know what i'm saying so but anyways once you get past that and you get into the higher natures and you start connecting to like the higher self on a level right so i'm kind of skipping some levels and shit but once you really get to the higher the higher nature aspect what happens is This is kind of the aspect of um becoming more than human so the way i call the way i call it is for the rapture and like the whole the angels and all that type of stuff i call that i call it i call this time period that we're in right now angel training you know what i'm saying and i don't think a lot of people take this shit serious because see when solomon built solomon's temple and all these different temples right 
supposedly like just about based off the story for anyone who gets too literal about everything um he was able to use demons or jinn and angels to build this shit right to build all this stuff now more so he used demons and jinn than angels because angels they have less power here well not really they kind of have less power but it's more like they hold on what time are we at so yeah it's like they got less power and stuff but at the same time it's like um they can't really be in this environment for that long they kind of have to be like demons they kind of have a system which i broke down that monster video that um kind of this whole that whole pyramid i was explaining is also like a gang stalking system too and you kind of got demons at the top of it but um they got this system where they can basically take all the energy they need from here because if you think about like an angel being like kind of like a fish in water but let's say that angel was kicked out of heaven or kicked supposedly right but for everyone who gets offended by this shit but um let's say it's in a realm of like it's close to god right different hierarchies of angels are um like you have source and then you have the angels and then the lower angels are maybe the furthest away from god and the highest angels are the closest right that source energy is like you could say the water that the fish is in you see what i'm saying that feeds them and stuff like that so when they come here the energy of source is veiled within the elements within nature within all these different things so they it's kind of like if you uh it's kind of like if you're a person who eats let's say you're on a farm you have like regular milk cow milk like dairy all this type of stuff and then you come into the city and then you have this like nasty type of dairy right it's going to be kind of harmful to you like let's say you're from a place that has very clean air and all this type of stuff and you go to like a polluted area with polluted it's kind of like they're going into for them it's like going into a polluted realm so they can't really it's kind of like they don't really have the immune system to deal with it. the demons and stuff like that they do because they've already been kicked out for for a minute so they they kind of already are here and they know how to build up their physical side because that immune system is what builds up your physical vessel right like a lot of people don't really realize that and they kind of have more abilities to to get shit done here in a sense that's why a lot of people work on the whole left hand path type of stuff they get quicker results and things like that but the right hand path the so angelic aspect it kind of takes longer and it lasts longer but it takes longer because they have to bring it through all the different realms and so the left hand path is usually quicker in a sense like but it's way more volatile is the easiest way i could word it um to put it in a, to put it nicely so that aspect makes it how should i word it it makes it um uh, like if you understand that concept of kind of just like the the demon angel thing i was just explaining and how like um the demonic side like this kind of explains why like if you connect to the animal nature all this different type of stuff more like it allows you to move better in this environment and then when you get into the higher natures and stuff like that it gets you to a level where when you become more than human more than you know more than these things and i talk about it being called angelic training and all that right it's more like um if you understand that these animals and these different things and um these lower natures right are like past aspects or lower because past and lower is kind of similar right natures right and then if you understand these angelic and higher natures are kind of future aspects then it's almost like in the revelations when it's talking about the rapture and it's talking about the whole angels coming and fighting the demons and stuff and it's like who would be those angels in the flesh does that make sense because If you think about the whole thing I'm just explaining with the Hebrews and how they went through all of these different places and they had to learn how to throw out all this kind of all the garbage this kind of why they're in a desert for 40 years they had to learn that took maybe a 3 day walk even if even if those were great places and distance and all that shit if it took through that 
they have to basically throw out all this garbage and what it is is you you could say an angelic like not for everybody but you could say the pe the so-called Hebrews whatever who went through all of that type of stuff that was more of going through the right hand path aspect too like they went through the left hand on every single place they went through for sure but the whole journey itself was kind of how I was explaining how like the angelic side it take like it takes a while for people to build up that immune system and that nature or angels or whatever to build up that immune system that nature to even exist and get things done in this reality so the way I look at it is like sorry I had to pause for a sec but um so this is what I kind of call it like angelic training in a sense because um right now where we're at So when we talk about ta tapping into abilities, tapping into powers, tapping into all these types of things, um, and angels aren't the only ones with power, so you know what I'm saying, that's not just angels, but um, tapping into the, so everyone's higher nature isn't an angel too, I need to get that straight too. And angels aren't the highest beings either, so that needs to be understood as well. So that's not really, that's also another thing. So your higher nature might not be, I'm just using angels as an example, so it might be a damn, Goblin might be your higher nature. <laughs> Where are you, goblin? A troll might be your higher nature. I don't know. Maybe, um, maybe an elf. Maybe a fairy. Maybe a dark elf. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe a dragon. Maybe an angel. Maybe um, who knows? You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, well, you should know. Like, but that's that's for you to figure out now. Again, that's not the first thing you should think about. The first thing you should probably think about is the lower shit and then work your way up. But anyways, so I can't really call it even like for the angelic beings, you can say it's angel training. And when it talks about the whole thousand years and then the angels and the fighting and all this type of stuff, I call this the, in Bleach, I call it the thousand year blood arc, right? I call this the, the thousand year training arc where a thousand years gets compressed into a very short amount of time. So it depends who you are. Like, again, if you're more just on this human shit, um, which is not a bad thing either way, it's just kind of your path regardless. But, um, and it might sound like I'm, it might still sound like it's a bad thing, but it's not. What, what it is is when I talk about, for example, uh, I think it was the first Tirith and Kara, I forget who it is, but someone, I, one of these one of these James or Buddhas Buddhas fasted for like thirty days and he got one thousand years of omniscience pretty much downloaded into him, right? And it kinda tells you that you can when you start when you get rid of a lot of the physical aspects of yourself and um fasting and tap it, and the thing about the plant based aspect was really just a huge aspect was to tap into using solar energy and things like that as well and being able to tap into the air element a lot more and things like that so really to tap in the air and fire elements a lot more so when you're able to do that you can change the pretty much like the structure of your, you can start doing almost like science fiction type of shit you can start doing shit with your body which is kind of crazy so when you see people who don't eat for a a whole year and they eat once a year that means their their one year your one year is their one day if that makes sense and if you eat three times a day that means like their whole <laughs> your three years is basically their one like if they because some of these guys might not even sleep for a damn year you know what i'm saying so like and again it's not saying one's better one's one's not but i'm saying when you can tap into like fasting people think of like starving your self and stuff like that which if you're doing it wrong then it is but if you know how to tap into certain things and especially just controlling your breath and things like that you can accelerate your chakras accelerate your accelerate your energy 
and seven years to a person might be a thousand years to you. This is even, it, it you can, it, it's different mathematics based off of different bodies and different, I mean, like what people do and stuff like that. But yeah, so that's kind of why, for example, in Dragon Ball, why Piccolo and the Namekians don't eat at all and they just take in solar energy and they just are basically immortal <laughs> like literally like they're pretty much just immortal like long story short like that's there's different types of immortality based off of different things you do uh, and I'm, that vampire shit that's not even included that's like that's like parasitical still so that's not really even that's not really immortality that's um in its true sense so it's i'm kind of making it sound easier than it is and depending on if it if you're on the right path then it is actually pretty easy if you're going in the right pace and you're going in the right direction and all this type of stuff but even if you look at angels in the bible you might have seraphim which are fiery serpents so i'm pretty sure they're connected to that serpent nature on a level you know what i'm saying you might have in egypt a winged serpent right then you might have a pharaoh that has a crown with a falcon and a serpent on it. It's like they clearly understand those totems extremely well and have raised it to a higher level. So that's and then you have maybe like another angel, which I forget which ones it were, maybe cherubs or some, I don't know. I don't remember which ones it were like um, Europeans make it look like some Cupid looking pedophile shit, but it's not like that. Mm -hmm not some cupid tammuz looking pedophile shit not that um i think cherubs sometimes don't it might not be the cherubs i forget which ones but they make them have like the fixed elements like taurus scorpio like so like an eagle a lion a bull and like a human face or something right that is so you you can see these different angels are connected with different animal natures and they're connected with different astrological aspects and they're connected with different things so it's all kind of one one fluid like they, they have actually activated kundalini they have activated merkabas and that's what the whole merkaba thing is that's why i keep going into this whole kabbalah and merkaba type of stuff because it's kind of tapping into basically angelic magic and stuff like that and um yeah so i'm talking about the daemon not demon but like the daemon or like when I say kind of the jinn, the demon, and the netters are kind of related in a sense, because a lot of people won't really realize that. And I guess you can say the, tsar, the tsars and stuff like that too. But anyways, they have a they have a connection through all aspects of themselves, whether it's lower, middle, and higher, or whether it's past, present, and future. Like you know what I'm saying. So you kind of have to go in the order that you're that you're dealing with. So basically look at it like okay what problems are you having in your life what obstacles are you having in your life and that will tell you which of these things that you probably need to work on you know what i'm saying so like if it's more the lower type of stuff you need to work on you might have uh you might be the type of person that is like oh, i hate society i hate reality i wish this shit was over uh da, 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 da. like you probably have an imbalance of connecting with that lower nature those lower natures in a sense you know what i'm saying because you might have had some situations in your life that um, were traumatic or just did not go the way you wanted. And instead of kind of facing that and realizing, learning about it, learning from it and overcoming it, you're kind of running away from it by trying to escape into your higher natures and just be like, we need to escape or we need to get out of here. We need to destroy everything, which we kind of do, but still like, like not kind of do, we do, but I mean, but it, it's like the, it's the imbalance that pe like because there's what you're trying to do with your intentions but then there's what you're actually doing which you're a lot of people are kind of just giving off like imbalance like an imbalanced version of themselves you know what i'm saying so lion king couldn't take over the kingdom until he balanced himself back out like that's pretty much how it was um and when i say take over the kingdom i mean like in a harmonious way so if you're imbalanced on the human aspect then you might be connected on these other aspects but you might not be able to integrate into society whatsoever uh 
you might feel isolated from the society you're in. And I'm not saying you have to be connected with the matrix. So like, don't get me, don't get it like that. But, um, but that, that, that's a little bit more normal. So that's a little bit better to be honest, like to give a fair assessment, that's a little bit more normal because people who are balanced on these other aspects, it's kind of like right now, this is kind of the time period where a lot of people are starting to connect with the people they should be around. So that, that, that's a little more fair to be honest. And then, people who are disconnected from the higher nature are probably the people who are um, still doing a lot of street shit, if that's the best way to word it. Like, not just doing street shit, but they're, um, like, their instincts are up, they're, this could be, like, homeless people who don't care about anything about themselves, right? This could be it's so many it's so many different it's so many different levels you know so yeah yeah so people who are disconnected from the higher nature they could be more on like the lower level shit like so not just people who are trying to escape so there's people who are connected to the higher nature who are trying to escape from shit and then there's could be people who are super into finances and money into like the just the earthly shit and this could be people stuck in their jobs stuck like again with three shit um or heavily tied into um, habits and stuff like that that they can't let go, things like that. That could be the lower type of stuff that people need to work on. And then people who are too in their higher natures, they could be, again, they don't care about their appearance, they don't care about their body, they don't care about what society, th and you shouldn't, but still, like they don't care at all about their reality. They don't, they don't care if they're crazy in a mental hospital, they don't care if they're um, completely isolated from the world at all like and I mean completely completely isolated in general like they don't even have a connection to their lower selves to an extent like um, people who even kill themselves um, I'm saying it kind of lightly but still like that um, yeah so it's an imbalance it's a health thing you, you, you see what I'm saying so kind of understanding so even with this rapture thing, um, you can say like children, certain people, yeah, they'll just probably get raptured themselves. Like, to be honest, not everybody, but a lot of children, a lot of women and stuff like that, they'll probably just get, they'll probably just get raptured because like, like that's probably how it is anyways. Like that just seems like what it would be. But, um, but a lot of us that are older and stuff, like there's kind of just work we got to do. And I, I, again, I call it angel training. Um, you can call it, I don't know, you can, you might have more natures than just angelic, like you might have higher natures that are more than just angelic and stuff. But the thing that it's not really grounded, you know what I'm saying? So if you have those higher natures, you want to be able to ground them. You know what I mean? So like, you don't really want to be like, I am this, like you, you want to take an ascension name and do all that. Don't get me wrong. Like, like I am Rashu, not like I know all the, it's more about being able to ground it and be it in reality. Cause people will be like, I'm an angel, I'm a God, I'm a fairy, I'm a whatever. But it's like, are you really that in the physical realm as well? Like, can you really bring that into the physical? Like people want to be gods, angels and dragons, you know what I'm saying? But can you be all of those things at once in the physical? Like, are you not just metaphorically too, I'm talking about like actually, actually, you see what I'm saying? So it's more about kind of, um, balancing these aspects of yourself and kind of creating harmony within yourself and you'll get harmony with, in the environment that you're in as well. So this is, you could say it war, all this type of shit too. I would say it's more so a test realistically. Um, realistically, I'd say it's more of a test, but at the same time, once we kind of realize what work we got to put in a lot of things will become a lot more clear so i don't think it's more so about like me versus you type of like i don't i think it's i think it's more so about you versus you getting out of the way of a lot of the shit that's going on attacking the spirits show up the spirits that are running a lot of this shit because as we attack these spirits 
a lot more crazier stuff that's already like this type, type of stuff that's happening in society i don't think we realize that just by us attacking these spirits we're instigating a lot of the crazy the destruction of society just on these higher levels i don't think people there's obviously a few, like remedy h and like a bunch of people talk like there's obviously people who understand this but i'm saying like once we really understand that how to do that how to attack these things on like these different levels but at in these spiritual realms and all that type of shit but then we create in the physical realm what we're like what we want to have because like if we if you go live on an island but you don't have any ability to farm or anything like you're not bringing anything to the table like i'm not saying everybody got to be a farmer but you got to bring something to the table other than um you know what i'm saying like you got to you got to be able to bring something to the table and um you also got to figure out what table you're trying to sit at so it, there's there's kind of it's kind of a lot to it i don't know it's kind of a freestyle video like i said i was trying to talk about the lunar solar and beyond the different spiritual systems um but i know a lot of people aren't going to do the research and try to figure out what that should mean so i kind of tried to integrate it in a way that people will understand and um research certain certain things that will be interesting to them and then on top of that um another give people insight on like what's kind of happening and going to happen without telling them like this is what's going to happen because the future isn't really set in stone it's kind of like you have options you know what i'm saying and you basically decide based, based on what you do with your will so like you have the ability to change destiny you know now another thing i will say is with ragnarok if you see the movie Thor Ragnarok too, because you know, it just kind of explains Ragnarok right there in a Hollywood adaptation level. Um, so they're definitely pr programming you to certain shit when you're watching that. So you gotta be aware of all that when you're watching this stuff. But once you understand the magic that they're putting, putting into it, you can, it doesn't really affect you like that. It does, it's honestly not even entertaining after you kind of understand the magic too. So it's like kind of, but anyways, the thing that was important that Odin was trying to make a point about, and I guess spoiler on this if you haven't seen it, but the thing he was trying to make a point about was um, Asgard wasn't about the actual place Asgard that they lived in. You know what I'm saying? It was about the people that made Asgard and they could rebuild that anywhere. And Thor, like you can see in the first movie, he was learning how to be worthy to get his hammer, which is him working on the lower in human natures and shit before he became more than human again, Thor, aka God form, right? His God form. Then Ragnarok was about the collective, but they had like basically a little, it was almost like a mini civil war, right? Because it was Thor against his sister, you know what I'm saying? And then it was like um, uh, in the other, you know, in the other movie. But then it, then it was, um, it was basically like a, like a civil war between Thor, Loki, and the sister and, you know they had all these magical beasts and all this other shit that was going on so that that was kind of like um understanding the fact that even as a group people are not going to agree but once you really understand yourself understand what you stand for and stuff and then the lower groups like the people like the general population and stuff once they really understand all that then you see in the movie they have to let go of the land that they're living in it wasn't about the land they're living in it wasn't about that it was about the people and about the fact that they can build that anywhere they go. That was that was the biggest part about that. So, um, meanwhile, Helen or whatever her name was, she wanted, she just wanted Asgard itself. She didn't care about the people or any of that. She just wanted Asgard. But Thor actually in the movie, right? It's again a movie. Repre and Ragnarok is their version of like Revelations in a sense, but it was their it was like the Viking end of the world aspect, but, um, and that's kind of what American gods is about. That's about Ragnarok, but with technology and shit like that. So it was more about them rebuilding. Thor represented the people and they rebuilt Asgard because Asgard was, for example, if you have Ethiopia, it's not about Ethiopia as like Ethiopia is the land. It's about the people itself who built it. it was like, you see what I'm saying? Or like Kemet. It's not really about Kemet itself where now people are trying to dig up everything and 
re recreate the Egyptian culture. It's not about that. It was about the people who made it. You know what I'm saying? And they can they can recreate that anywhere where they're at. And they don't have to take all the scrolls and all the names and all that shit with them. It's not about that. It's about the fact they understood all the shamanistic aspects of things. They understand the human aspect of things, and they understood how to connect it with the stars and connect it back with Earth. You know what I'm saying? So they could recreate that anywhere. Helen, though, in the movie, she just wanted Asgard or Kemet or whatever. Like, she just wanted the title of that place and the land of that place. You see what I'm saying? And she just wanted to be, like, the ruler, the, which is kind of why I keep talking about with Satan. He kind of just wanted to be the one god. But the whole thing about being united, when I, when I say to Wahido, I'm not trying to get people into the Bible or into the church. That's not what I'm trying to do at all, at all, at all. What I'm trying to explain is the meaning behind it. When I say united and stuff like that, it's the understanding that the people like whether you want to say they are gods and stuff like that or sons of gods whatever and then they make a collective right that collect them being able to make that collective and make the like make the make the heaven on earth is what made asgard asgard this is why i keep explaining about the whole story about the well and the desert and the barren land and the original beings the original angels and dragons like that actually created the land of luxury, the land of Tob, like the Tobin land, like the good land, right? Versus the people who wanted to just live in that land of luxury, which were the demons, which is what started the war in heaven. You know what I'm saying? And that's going to be also one of the things that ends the war as well. But at the same time, there has to be this aspect of connecting from your higher to lower nature, connecting all of these things together. You know? There's a reason why there's 72 angels in the Goetia and 72 angels in the I mean demons in the Goetia and you can almost look at them as like Michael fighting Lucifer and this thing like you know this demon fighting this angel it's like if it was one person it'd be like you're higher versus you're lower like you see what I'm saying it's kind of and then once you understand how to like put that together and not be half angel half demon that's not what I'm talking about either <laughs> It's, that's not what it is about. It's not about it being this twilight being about being half good, half evil. Because they already tried that in modern day society and that did not work either. That's not what I'm talking about. That's, that's why I even say with the whole me of beast I think about being 100% human, 100% divine. That's what this is kind of talking about. It's this merging of it all. So like, even if you are on that lower nature, it's being able to raise that up into the higher levels and connect it with the higher levels and exist in that plane in between. You see what I'm saying? And it's not about being 50-50. That's not what it is. It's 100%, 100%. It's, it's, those are completely different things. That's, that's one, one is being whole. The other one is being like a half, a cup half empty, a cup half full. That one is the color gray, like kind of being in between everything, being in like a purgatory state. The other one is having heaven on earth. You like it's they're very different things. It seems really similar, but they're very different things, you know. Um, so these are the people who are like they're kind of just in between everything, you know what I'm saying? Like there is good and there is bad. But once you overcome your bad nature, then you then you can live in that good at like it, it, it's understanding that that balance principle. So that's that it's understanding balance in that level, not a balance level where like we have good and we have evil and we got to keep the balance like it's not it's that that's not what it is <laughs> it's not it's the heart is always lighter than the feather good over always overcomes evil you always have the line with their foot up in the flag right because it's stomping onto evil so in the military when they do the the marching the way they march like this is what they're talking about so um this is having the falcon crown and the the snake crown about being indigenous to everywhere in the world but not being so proud proud about where you're at about being able to recreate that anywhere you, you feel me so that's it, it, it it's about the solution and not living in the in the uh, carcass of what once was great or whatever you see what i'm saying it's really about moving forward and progression and not being product of the situation you're in and not being um, controlled based off of 
what someone believes your destiny is. You have the choice. So I hope that was clear. Still don't even really know the title of the video, <laughs> but um, but yeah. Again, it's again it's about really connecting on the, all of those levels and even when you think you've gotten to that point you probably can go deeper and yeah then at the end of the day it's what kind of society are we going to build because the way i look at it is again we again like what i've been explaining this whole time you have your lower nature you have your higher nature you have that place in between that you're going to exist in it doesn't mean a thing now now you're going to just kind of fluctuate and like, like it's more like a thing where like you're one complete being but at the same time you recreate that aspect of like heaven and earth connected it's kind of like the tower of babel but not in the bad way they kind of make it seem it's kind of recreating that so that we not the tower of babel but like recreating that connection between the earthly aspect and the natural masonry natural things that we built on the land reconnecting that with the stars if you, you know what i'm saying but but we need to take take what we can from society take all the good shit we can take from it and leave behind the bad shit because we're not taking their karma and shit like that so and you only do that when you take responsibility for it by being by falling into these mental traps and these proud pride traps and things like that and then um, it's not like we all got to go to the same area and all that type of stuff. If, you, if we're really on some powerful shit, we could honestly start doing it in the areas that we're in and start do, like, this is probably why we chose the areas that we're in to be key figures in the locations we're in. So we can probably just do them, do this. Like if you're really powerful. You're going to be at the point where you've changed. You can probably change your family successfully to an extent. And you're probably going to start changing the people around you to an extent too. So there's a couple ways you can go about that. You can kind of look at it like we all need to go to the same area, which probably wouldn't work because none of us can really agree on shit anyways. Or you can find people around you that might agree, which is really tough as well. So I don't know. That's right. Right now, once you once you really figure this stuff out about yourself, you'll probably be attracted to a lot of the right people or they'll be attracted to you. You know what I'm saying? So um this is really not the time to be worrying about things. This is, um, you can use the fear to get your ass in gear to get shit done, but like, it's really not a time to be like stressed out by fear and stuff like that. Or, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, you're where you're at. You're, you're where you need to be at all times. It's not really, even though I'm talking about a lot of, um, stressful shit, like you're still, you're still where you need to be and you're still doing what you need to be doing. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, and don't be afraid to make changes and stuff like that too, right? So it was probably hard for the, yeah, no, anyways, yeah, so don't be afraid to make changes.